guys, in today's review we'll be looking at a newly tooled Dapple Loco from a few years ago. And this one is a LSWR B4 Dot Tank, it's a 040. And this one is in its pre-grouping livery, I believe, and the product code you need for this is 4S-018-007. And it's in dark green and it's lined. Like I said, this is from Dapple, and it was around the £100 mark uh, just before Dapple put their prices up. I got this model from Osborne's Models. Uh, let's see if it's any good and get into the review, shall we? So here goes. So with this locomotive, you do get some additional couplings or different style of couplings, anyway, more of a square. And they go into the pockets that the NAM ones are in, the small tension lock ones. And they are in a resealable bag. We also get an owner's manual, which is very important, especially if you're deciding where to put the details and how to take off the base plate and DCC fit it if you want to do all that sort of stuff. If you're doing that sort of stuff, please read the manual is all I'm going to say. And the manual is quality, it's made, it's more like a book. As we move on to the front of the locomotive now. This locomotive does have sprung buffers, I think they are metal, they are sprung quite easily as well. We also have the Dapple style small tension lock coupling as well already applied to the front and back. We do have some eyes knocks off off the tracks as well underneath. As we move back up to the buffers, the buff boon housing is in red. We also have a hook separately applied as well. Then we have a steam pipe or vacuum pipe applied too. If you look closely, you can also see the front of the cylinders, which are in a silver or gray. Moving on up, we do have, looks like two or three lamp irons at the bottom, which are quite small. We do have a separately applied smoke box dart. We also have some inches picked out in the same color as the dart and the handrails, which look to be metal. Again, like I said, we have the handrails at the top. We also have the big chimney as well. Again, we have a few bits of bracing dotted around at the side of the smoke box front. As we move on to the side of the model, both sides of the model to me are exactly the same in every way. I can't seem to find the reversing rod on this. Maybe on the real thing it was internally. Let's start with the wheels. The wheels themselves are die cast wheels and they have been colored appropriately and also have the axles covered in to the, the colour of the wheels, which is... The rods themselves are metal. We also have a crosshead, I believe it's called, which is plastic. We do have some sanding stuff and piping all the rest under their axles and springs. Highly detailed. The cylinders themselves are lined as well. And they do have a metal look to the silver bits. We also have steps which are lined. One near the cab and one near the cylinder. Delivery of this locomotive is lined green. And you got the lining again on the cylinders, the steps, I believe near the cab and the boiler as well, and maybe the tanks. The tanks themselves do have destinations of the places the ships went to from the port of Southampton. And this one has Guernsey on it, crisply applied. Man, most of the painting on here is crisply applied, no mistakes whatsoever. And that seems to be in a gold with a black background font. We also have some handrails on the tanks as well. Next to that, we have some gold piping separate applied on both sides. We also have what looks like to be a sanding box next to that gold piping. On top of the tanks themselves, we have, which I believe is a toolbox, but some people have said it is a sanding box. On the tanks themselves, which we'll get to in a minute, we do have four, two on either side, holes, the hook, I think cranes on two or tarpaulins, they are on there, either side of the toolbox. As we move on to the cab side, the cab side itself does have a handrail going all the way up to the top of the roof of the cab and we have a small one at the other side as well. The cab itself does have struts from the cab to the tanks. As we move on to the cab area itself, for such a small locomotive this cab is highly detailed. Everything in there is painted to the right colours. We have a handbrake there in silver. We also have some gauges and piping as well painted too. This model does have a firebox glow on analog, or it could even flicker, which is a nice touch for such a small and cheap locomotive. Again, we have them handrails, which I mentioned before, in silver. We also have what I think looks like a wood effect going on. And as you can tell, the cab is the cutaway cab, not the enclosed one. That will do both versions of that. And we also have two portholes either side, so one facing the front and one facing the back. And they are flush glazing on them as well. Like I said, the cab is highly detailed for such a tiny locomotive. As we move on to the back of the locomotive now, 
This model again does have sprung buffers. We also have the dapple style small tension lock. We also have a hook as well and the buffer beam housing is in red like the front. We also have a vacuum pipe as well. As we move on up, it looks like we have four lamp irons dotted around into a diamond shape. We also have a silver handrail just before the portal window. And that again, like I said, is flush glazing. It's a nice touch. And the back is um, cut away as you can tell for where the handle of the brake is or for the water. And that is lined, the whole back is lined in this green, two-tone green, I would say. And it's a hell of a different cab to the enclosed ones that DAP will do. As we move on to the top of the locomotive now, as you may have noticed, there's no coal bunker as such, as far as I can see. But we do have the roof with a few rivets on it, and it is, it is in black. As we move along, you can see the safety valves and whistles next to each other. And the safety valves have been picked out with red. And the whistle is, it looks like plastic, but it does look nice, it does stick out a bit. And you see that porthole window that I mentioned earlier. As we move across to the tanks, which I find interesting. These tanks are pretty small. Like I said, most of the body is plastic. We do have, which looks like, a water filler cap on each. We have a toolbox or sanding box, depending on your preference. We also have another hole just near the safety valves and the whistles. And then we have these two on either tanks, so four in total, holes in a triangle shape, which I think were to lift the locos up with cranes, or it could be for tarpauling. I'm really unsure. We do have... A dome and some lining. Again, the lining is in gold or green, depending on your preference. The dome itself, depending on which model you get, is in a different place. That will have tooled up for, I think it's two or three variants of the boiler. And then we do have the tall chimney. As you see, we also have that gold piping and the handrails and I think the sanding boxes as well. As we do an underneath look at the model now, as you can tell, these couplings, they do a V-shape and they do pivot pretty well. There on either ends, we also can see that it has the brake rigging already applied. If you want to take the base plate off, you have to do four screws and the brake rigging to get it off. And I just wasn't willing to do that. But from reference, this does have an all-wheeled pickup and they're inside, not like strips, like the Hornby and Backman ones. Then once you're done, then four screws inside, you are greeted with the wheels near the cab have about Six or seven cogs by the looks of it. We do have metal bearings in there on all of the wheels and the couplings themselves are holding by a spring. So just be wary if you take them apart. Please, if you take the base plate off, please do not tip the loco upside down because you will wreck the locomotive from what I've read and heard. And under there, you can see we have metal axles and we also have the copper contacts for the pickups. Like I said, the all-wheel pickup being such a small locomotive. And again, to put it all back together, you do it the same way and add the brake rigging. I wasn't willing to do that because I hate brake rigging, adding it, and I just wasn't willing to wreck my locomotive, basically. But as I said before, you do have some underframe detail here. You do have the sanding pipes. You also have some springs and axles. And you also have where it was made, so I think it's China Dapple. Again, it's pretty easy. If, you, if you've got confidence in undoing all that stuff, feel free, go ahead. Uh, please follow the instructions, all I'm going to say on that. I believe we have a five pulse pole screw round motor in this. And the chassis itself is die cast. It's the only thing on it that is die cast. Next up will be the usual test but without the second radius simply because it's such a small locomotive i believe this probably could do first radius if not below so next up will be like i said the points test see if it's any good because most 040s do struggle quite a lot on points especially on my layout so here goes shall we Not too bad, it got stuck once at 40%. So yeah, for minus, it managed that pretty well. A slightly different points test, but it managed it anyway. Still quite a lot of dead zones. And it just stopped once. Next up will be some slow running speed, and I've lined it a train, and I'll see you at the end, so here goes. It made it over that point pretty good. What's that, 28?
Pretty smooth, and this is a DCC ready or analog. So yeah guys, that's the end of the review and the running session. Before I give my opinion of what I usually do and tell you what it ran with, which was a mixture of pre-grouping freight and a little bit of early falls. And as you can tell, in the second part it was coaches, a mixture of Hattons and Hornby, LNWR and LNAR, in the teak, the LNAR is. I paid, well, it was a Christmas present and it was £107 from Osborne's Models, um, which seems to be in line with the new Staple stuff. Uh, the new batch that they've got of this coming out, which is about the £107, £111. Originally these were less than £100, and this is from the first batch. So yeah, for me it's a good model. Could do with a little bit more weight. I can see why people were raving about these at the time. And they're doing so many different liveries, with so many different body styles and cab styles. And you have the flickering firebox effect as well on analog and DCC. I think you can do it your own way. Uh, they run well across points, as you can tell. I might, yeah, it got stuck, uh, but I expected that. But going across the other points, as you saw, it ran pretty smooth, especially on the inner loop uh, near the signal box. There's quite a few dead zones there, and I managed it pretty well. I thought I'd change up the way I did the points test 
simply just something different. Um, a lot of my 040s do struggle on my Pico freeway point, so that's the reason why it was changed. Like I said with this, there's nothing wrong in these at all. Just need a little bit more weight. Uh, maybe the tanks or the bod body should have been die cast as well as the chassis. But it is what it is. Uh, like I said, I still recommend these. And they're still a good runner. Um, most of the running that you saw on this was less than 30 on the Gage Master Combi controller. On the inner loop and the outer loop as well. So they are good at slow speed crawling. Like I said, they probably could do first radius. But I didn't have any first radius. Sorry for the little ramble, I do apologise. Uh, so for me it's a big thumbs up, hopefully I will see you in the next video. So please take care and goodbye. <laughs>